Well, I said I was done changing out desktop speakers for a while, but that didn't stick. Creative offered to send out their new gaming soundbar, the Sound Blaster X Katana, with fancy RGB lighting. I just couldn't resist. This is actually the first time I've ever used or tested a soundbar in person, so this was a great opportunity to see if they are as whack as I thought they were. Was it worth the switch? I'm Meeples Fox here to make tech easier and more fun, taking a look at the Katana, a blade of sound and RGB goodness from Creative. I've reviewed quite a few audio products from Creative over the years, but I expected to hate this soundbar. I'm pretty old school when it comes to audio gear. To me, directional audio only comes from having physically separated speakers set up at the proper angles and directions, and virtual surround sound is just a joke. To me, the best headphone audio experience doesn't involve software effects, but a good sound engine and proper stereo open back cans. Soundbars have always seemed like a mainstream family TV room kind of product, not something that serious audio enthusiasts or gamers would take note of. So Creative went out and built one for gamers. It's, it's weird. The Katana is a pretty sweet little sound system, if expensive at a MSRP of $300. The main sound bar features two 34mm front-facing tweeters on the side. They're, they're kind of angled, but they're still front-facing. Two 63.5mm mid-bass drivers facing upwards, and then the subwoofer, which sits on your floor. This is a perfect desktop gaming setup. The high end is crisp and clear, the mid-range carries well, and if it shoots behind your monitor, it creates a unified sound that I love, and the sub can pack a punch. Unlike traditional desktop speakers, however, instead of fitting two small speakers somewhere on your desk, you need a lengthy space available below or in front of your monitor. I hope you have a monitor arm of some sort. This clearance was an issue for me as I keep a lot on my desk. The feet for the soundbar angle it upwards a bit though, so the sound isn't just shooting at your keyboard. Nice touch. The onboard processors are quite high-end and can take up to 24-bit 96kHz audio and up to 5.1 surround to process and deliver to you the best way possible. The built-in sound card can also virtualize 7.1 surround sound for gaming over USB as well. For inputs, on the back we have power in, the connection for the subwoofer, micro USB in for computer connection, optical toslink input, 3.5mm aux connection, and a USB-A port for charging or playing audio from a flash drive. This capability even supports FLAC files, which is kinda nice. It also acts as a USB sound card, and one that you can hook up a 3.5mm headset to via the headphone in or headphone out and microphone in ports, which is kind of nice. Bluetooth connectivity is also supported on the Katana. This is a pretty complete package, and even comes with a handy remote. I wish I could throw this on my retro gaming station with my HD CRT television, but I don't have room in front of the TV on the stand due to its size, and trying to balance it on top of the TV would mean sound pointing upwards away from my face, which is not ideal. Maybe if I get to upgrade TV stands sometime in the future that might work out, and I look forward to that day. All that leaves us to talk about is the RGB and the Windows Sound Blaster Connect app. Again, they have different drivers and different software for this speaker system than their other speakers or headphones. I hope one day they can go for a more complete package solution like Logitech's gaming software. The Sound Blaster Connect for the Katana is much easier to set up and use than their other Sound Blaster tools, however. You can choose from a variety of profile for gaming, music listening, movies, and so on. These control the sound profiles for usual things like compression, EQ, virtual surround sound, but also the 49 RGB LEDs lining the bottom. You can set custom mood profiles, patterns for lights to cycle through, and so on. I'm quite impressed, actually. They also have some nice voice morph profiles as per the headset that I reviewed for that mic input. They really tried covering all the bases with this, and I can appreciate it, again, especially for the price. It sounds fantastic. For music listening, this may be my favorite speaker system so far. YouTube videos sound very good here too. The gaming profiles are pretty good and can sound nice, but I always notice some sort of wishy-washy, listening in a seashell-like sound from virtual surround sound, so I leave it on neutral and just have fun with the lighting effects. I have a lot of fun gaming with it too. They also have a cine mode, which has a dialogue booster and smart volume to try to keep things normalized, if you're into that. I did need to mention that my first review sample that I received had a defect where randomly while consuming media, YouTube videos, music, editing videos, anything, the tweeters would just stop making sound, leaving only the mid-bass drivers at the top creating a very 
AM radio like sound effect. Very specific. They want the fastest machine that I can build for exporting videos. And they want it in the server room so that they can just re to H264. So I kind of went, okay, only one small problem. With Petabyte Project coming... At first, it was a very rare, odd occurrence that I wasn't sure what was happening, but then it started happening multiple times per day where I just had to stop using them. They swapped me a new unit, and it seems to be just fine, but I did need to mention that. Overall, I'm very satisfied with this soundbar, and I think I will utilize this with wall mounts and make it a permanent part of my setup at some point. I'm almost scared to say that, though, because it, it almost guarantees that they'll have some other crazy speaker product to send me and make sure I need to replace the this with the new one. We'll see.